Cassie and I met a few times actually to start planning what the feel would be like. I'm in charge of the visual, you know, and it doesn't mean that Cassie doesn't have a visual sense. She clearly is a part of this process with me and I think our collaborations is what over the years been so successful about the two of us working together. But this is very consistent with how I would want to have a Thanksgiving at home. A lot of the idea for us was to keep it very natural and accessible and comfortable. So we kept a lot of these neutral tones so they would sort of be a very like neutral canvas and keep it as like a layers of texture instead of colors and so we wanted to keep it kind of simple but a little bit more elegant. We thought wheat was a perfect nice harvest you know for the centerpiece and also what was key for me is keeping the centerpiece um, as basically three parts. We have the two small uh, wood crates that just hold some hay and some decorative boards. But when that pheasant comes in, we can take out the middle pieces, the wheat, put those off to the side, and then put the main course, you know, essentially in the middle of the table to sort of take over as the centerpiece. So, it's, so that's why I liked it in three sections as opposed to one large piece, because then we have movable elements. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the antique malls. Um, all the mismatched antique silver is stuff that I've just purchased over the years. We decided sort of early on on, on red pears as our theme. So we made our invitations and everything would have the red pear icon. Twine was sort of another sort of consistent theme that we wanted throughout. We made the twine into our napkin rings. And then we also got obviously pears, actual real pears, not wax ones, for the uh, place cards and just made the leaves for the names. Now when you are gonna start the photo shoot with the people, how are you gonna direct that? What are you gonna tell everybody to do? A lot of it is I'm gonna observe. A lot of it for me when I'm photographing people and I wanna keep it feeling very natural is I sort of like to let things happen and then when I see moments, then I make people repeat them if I've missed it. That's sort of been a successful tool for me. Um, I don't like to Do over... It again, but act natural. Yeah, because it's hard to over-direct because people... These aren't paid models. They're not right. used to being in front of the camera that way. So the more you push people, the more uncomfortable they become. And it's not that they're not willing and they're lovely people, but it's not natural. So I try to keep it as natural as possible. I try to keep them like... What I, what I will do first is make sure that everyone is seated in a way that I could see who I want to see when I want to see them. And then once I've like sort of established those parameters, then it's about letting things naturally unfold. It takes a lot of planning. I mean, it's like the idea is to make it look like there's such ease, exactly. and so nothing but into this, but it's not an impossibility. Like it's, it's, all the elements are very simple. It's just pulling together the right ones so that it looks good.